everyone thanks very much for your patience and thanks again for joining us for today's webinar looking at the new features of, of 3d repo v5 uh, i'm andrew Norrie. i'm the commercial director at 3d repo um, and with me today i've got our product director matt osmond who'll be helping me go through some of the new features and hopefully answer some of your questions at the end so a bit of housekeeping um, we are using zoom webinar today so everything is being recorded um, and if you've signed up for this webinar you will be sent the recording at the end um, we do obviously have the ability for questions, so please do ask, ask questions as we go through. Um, we'll be monitoring them. If it feels like a good time to stop and answer them, we may do, but we'll probably keep them all till the end. Um, but do please keep them coming in as we go through so we can prepare for that as, as we're going through the webinar. So for an agenda for today, um, we have a really quick intro to 3D Repo, just looking at the attendee list, did note that there are a few people who maybe aren't existing customers of 3D Repo. So just to introduce the platform and what we do really quickly. Um, then we're gonna have a look at the user interface update as part of V5, comparing it with the old version and talk a bit about why we did have done what we've done, why those changes will hopefully help you as users to use the platform more effectively. Um, then we're going to look at what we've done with the model viewer. Um, so we've been doing some really interesting research over the past year, which has now made its way into the program or into the platform around uh, how we view models and how we stream that data directly from the cloud to your web browser. And then we're going to start looking at re really what I think is the most powerful feature of, of this upgrade, which is the custom tickets. Um, so we have an instruction to what exactly that is, and then we'll look at some of the workflows that custom tickets enables, and that will be where, where Matt comes in. So in terms of an intro, uh, introduction, so as hopefully most of you are aware, 3D Repo is a, a fully cloud-based platform. It allows you to upload 3D models from various different formats from all of the different vendors into the cloud where we decompose them into a database, um, which you can then use in, in various ways. The main way our flagship product, 3D Repo IO, is what we're gonna be talking about today and how these changes have been implemented, but all of these changes are available through our API into all of the tools. So if you are one of those customers that's built a custom application on top of 3D Repo, these new features will be available into that custom application as well. Um, so custom applications like plan base that we built uh, with GLA or, or uh, 3D Send, which we, we developed in-house as well, or any of those applications you've created in Unity and Unreal, which are linked to 3D Repos Cloud, will via the API have these features available. And all of this is held together via that API. So model, models and data can be pushed back and forth between various different tools and 3D Repo, whether that's uploading models from something like BIM 360 into 3D Repo or pulling data down into things like Excel and Power BI from your models to be able to analyze and, and check that information. So the first part of what we're gonna be looking at today around uh, 3D Repo V5 and probably the most uh, obvious changes that you'll see when this becomes released is uh, the 3D repo uh, user interface has changed quite significantly. Um, so we'll go through some of those changes and look at it. So really to give an idea of the look and feel, this is the current login page for 3D repo as it is today. Um, and this is what we'll, we'll be changing to um, a lot cleaner interface, uh, more, more organized. Um, one of the other things that will be coming later this year um, to this particular screen is the ability to add single sign on as well. So we're working on single sign on with Microsoft um, specifically. Um, so you'll be able to link into things like your Active Directory and, and, and connect up your, your system in that way as well. Then once you log in, everyone will be very aware of this area. This is where all the team spaces are. So where you have your personal team space and the team spaces that you're part of, um, you can access those directly here. Um, how that's changing, with the new version is it's becoming a lot more visual. Um, so with bigger thumbnails to be able to make it clearer to people which area they're going to work in. Um, and then once you enter a team space within the current 3D repo, um, it was a bit of a messy layout where you had uh, projects listed down and then within each project, uh, containers containing the models, which were the white ones and the blue ones where the federations were. What we're doing now is trying to streamline that a lot more. So uh, as you log in, you'll see your projects first. Um, you can click, click the project that you want to go into. Uh, so I'll talk about it. So you click the projects that you want to go into. And then once you click through into there, you'll see the, the federations only 
Um, so we're keeping the federations as the part of the model, part of the, the user interface that we're guiding people towards because that's where the work really happens and then hiding the containers away from the user uh, because most users don't need to look at the containers. They just need to look at the federations that they're part of. So just trying to simplify that workflow for users. Then we've got the upload screen. So those of you that are involved in uploading data into 3D Repo will know that it could be quite a laborious task at times. So you would have to go in and upload individual files to the containers within there. So if you have a container for you, say your architectural model, go and upload there and then go in separately and upload the structural. What we've done with the new user interface is allow for multiple uploads. So we can drag and drop a bunch of files into 3D Repo, assign them to the containers that they need to be uploaded to, and then 3D Repo will take care of the rest for you. So it's a huge time saving for the admin side of when you're, you're uploading models, if you're not doing it via a connection to a common data environment or, or something like that. Then one of the most popular areas of 3D Repo is probably the, the issues and risks areas. This is the Kanban board where we can drag and drop issues around, edit them and add, and add new ones. Um, this has had a makeover as well in the new version really just giving more screen space to the Kanban board than what we had previously, making it a bit of a cleaner interface for people to use. And then finally, within the model viewer, um, we've just cleaned this up quite a bit and, and allowed for, for more space to see the model again. Um, so got rid of some of the, the UI and made it easier to flick between them. So there's a, a drop down at the top there where it says hotel and furniture, where you can drop down and easily flick between different models and federations um, a lot quicker than what we could do before. And then the cards themselves, where you do the work, have also had a makeover to make them cleaner and, and easier to uh, understand. Um, and we'll be talking a bit more about how these can be customised later in, in the custom tickets part of the, the presentation. Um, so that's a quick look at the UI. Uh, that is available in a beta testing at the moment. So if you are an enterprise user of 3D Repo um, and would like to start getting involved in the new UI and looking at that, uh, please do drop us an email after this and we can get your account activated and show you how to access that um, within the 3D Repo environment. Not all features are fully finished at the moment, that's why we're saying beta. Um, that will become the standard UI later on uh, this month. So the next bit is looking at the, uh, the model viewer improvements. Um, so this is something we've been working on for, for probably over a year now. Um, and really for, for a couple of reasons, it, there are a couple of challenges that were put to us by users from the user side and from the technical side. So from a user's perspective, the models are just getting bigger. And this is a good thing because this means the industry is using more 3D. We've got more subcontractors getting involved in the 3D process, which is adding more detail. Manufacturers are now providing high level, um, high level of detail assets, maybe too high level in some cases, but and so that causes a problem as well. Um, but it also means that we're increasing the scope of how the tools are used. Whereas before we would be looking at BIM and collaboration across maybe one project, we're now looking at it across a portfolio level. So where we want to be able to look at really long infrastructure projects of, of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 miles, how do we come across that problem rather than splitting it down? Is there a way that we can view it all? Um, but also, there are some technical difficulties so not all models behave in the same way different formats going from ifc to revit to dgn the, the geometry is very different um we also know that un unlike other platforms we don't want to manipulate your data too much or at all um so it whereas other platforms will degradate the information and take away some of the data we want to give you the full uh the full information to all of the the geometry that you've given us and not kind of hide any of it or, or degradate it um, and we also know that we also have kind of a memory limited environment in a, in a web browser as well so we, and not all people have really powerful machines so we need to try and find ways to, to come across that so what we've come up with is uh, the ability to stream data from 3d repo so the current version of 3d repo that you use today loads all of the information at the start so it says we've got a building you want to view it let's get you the whole building and you can view it um, this means that eventually a web browser will give up and depending on the power of your machine, your performance might not be that great. What we're moving to is the ability to just give you the information that you need more in the way that a video game would work. So as you move through the level, it loads the assets that are needed. We're applying the same thing to your BIM model um, it, within the, the web browser. Um, 
So this is the first version of that working that you may have seen earlier uh, last year. So this is 3D repo streaming running in the Unreal Games engine. So this is an Unreal application that's been created in, um, in Unreal Engine, uh, but it's loading the assets directly from the cloud via 3D repo. So nothing actually of this actually exists in the game until you move through it and then it says, right, I need to see it. So you can see some examples of that here. So we're artificially limiting this from uh, to, to make it so that you can't see everything. Uh, but this is a huge model containing nearly 700 million uh, triangles. Um, and as we move through, you can see the level of detail that's in here. And as we go up this shaft, it starts to load it in as a game and gives you all the information that you need. So this is to the full LOD that was loaded into the system. There's no optimization being done on the geometry itself. Um, so you're getting all the information that you would need. So this we've had available for about six months to some of our, our developer clients um, who are creating stuff within Unreal. Um, but what we've been working on is porting that same technology into the web browser, into the tools that most of you guys are using within 3D Repo. Um, so in this example from Balkabiti, where we've been working with them on, on the M25 Junction 10, um, you can see we load in most of the information. So the bigger parts come in so that we can easily navigate around and understand where we are in the project. But then as we zoom in, we really get that level of detail start to increase. Um, so as we move through the project, it starts to stream in that information. We can understand where we are, but then when we stop and we want to investigate something, we can drop down to, to a lower level and everything will load in. So really quick and responsive. We've also got all the information still in there as well. So you can pull in all of the asset data directly about all of these assets. Um, and you still have all the normal visibility controls as well. So we can zoom in, look at anything within, within that project and understand exactly what's going on. So what we think is that this really gives us not only the ability to support larger projects that may not have been possible in the web browser before, but also to support lower end devices. Um, so for users who maybe don't have a graphics card, don't have a really good dedicated graphics card, um, this will allow them to, to still be able to view the models in, in some sort of capacity. Um, maybe having to zoom in a bit more to be able to get the, all the information that they want, but um, still having that smooth navigating experience that, that you get when you do have a, a good graphics card. Um, so this is a feature that's currently in uh, QA for us um, and will be released again later this month when the full V5 comes out. Um, but if you do have any use cases around this where you'd like to test it at the moment, we are looking for test models. Please do get in touch. Um, we, we are really keen to get some models in to test before we, before we launch it in a few weeks' time. So I think that's it from me. I'm going to hand over to Matt now, if you're there, to carry on with the custom tickets portion. Yep. Hi, everyone. Um, also, just to follow on from what Andrew said earlier, uh, don't forget to post your questions in anything that Andrew's talked about or anything that I'm about to talk about. Uh, it's good to get them in as we're going along so that you don't have to remember what they are at the end. Um, let me just run, get to the right place in my presentation. That would help. Okie dokie. So hopefully I should be sharing my screen now. Right, so just to elaborate a little bit, obviously Andrew mentioned it um, slightly about custom tickets and what we're doing, but first of all, I wanna cover where we've come from in order to explain kind of what we're hoping from custom tickets and where we're gonna be meeting our customers kind of halfway. And to say um, that, you know, as much as it's something we're building, we're also unlocking a set of tools for you to build your own um, tool set unique to your business or your process. So to start with, we, I wanted to look at issues. So for those of you that have used, been using 3D Repo, uh, you'll be familiar with issues. For those that haven't, um, issues has been there since pretty much the start of 3D Repo. Um, it aligns with the BCF schema. Um, it's sort of deviated a little bit, but it's still compatible with the BCF schema over time. Uh, it is due to that design focus, uh, due to that BCF uh, integration, it's predominantly design focused. So it's about finding a point in the model, finding a viewpoint and assigning someone, um, giving it a type and a status and those sorts of things. So it's been really great. Um, it's interoperable with a lot of different platforms. So in 3D Repo, you can use it with um, Revit and AutoCAD 
and um, Navisworks, but you can also export a BCF out of 3 Repo and open it in Salibri, in BIMTrack, you know, wherever else you're, you're managing BCF. Since we started that uh, issues schema, we've also added 4D sequencing into the mix. Uh, we've allowed you to draw 3D shapes onto an issue, uh, attach other objects such as documents and PDFs or web, web links to uh, issues, and also color overrides. But the limiting factor here is that this is very much a them feature. It was something that the industry was doing and 3D Repo decided in order to sort of keep up and, and maintain relevance, we should support the standard functionality that the, the rest of the industry was going with. From that, that idea that people would like to take a 3D model and tag things up inside the 3D model, we moved on to risks and safety base. And that was in partnership with Discovering Safety, uh, we looked at PAS 1192 part six, um, and we are in part helping part of the ISO 19650 part six discussions. Uh, and it was all about better health and safety co uh, collaboration, utilizing the model as a communication point, rather than having a spreadsheet with a bunch of rows in explaining risks, you could actually visualize the risks in a 3D model, get people more familiar with what that means and how they could mitigate them. And also in terms of CDM deliverables from the design stage, it allows you to easily collaborate on the risks and then produce a deliverable model at the end without having to continually rewrite uh, an entire Revit model just because one risk mitigation has changed. Uh, that moved us away from design and it started to get into the kind of the us phase of this process where we said actually 3D Repo's got some ideas about how we can use 3D models. We partnered up with Discovering Safety and we built this process uh, with them and with our customers in mind. But while we've been showing, Andrew and I have been showing issues and risks. I mean, I've been showing it. I've been here almost three years. We've been showing issues and risks since then. And every time we get into a meeting with a customer, we start to hear more ideas. You know, what if I could use a 3D model for stakeholder engagement or perhaps onboarding or model validation? That's one of our biggest features at the moment that people use 3D Repo for model validation. But the challenge up till now has been whilst it's great to do the model validation, you don't end up with actionable traceable items that you can then hand off to people and say, I need you to fix this. Uh, and that's largely because the issues and risk schema don't fit those that functionality. Um, so also, what if you could record QA inside a, a 3D model to say, yes, that's been signed off, or that is a waiting sign off, or that's failed sign off, and now it's going through a workflow process, and it's been assigned to someone. So we really listened to our customers over the past couple of years, and we've been building out all these features. And we started to think there's no way we could build a platform that off the shelf is going to support all these things. Um, so what we came up with is custom tickets. And essentially, they are customizable forms. So in your team space in 3D Repo, you can build a form um, with a number of different modules, which I'll show on the next slide. Uh, those forms could be linked into 3D space in the model. So someone could go in and let's say you've created, in this case, a, um, uh, a cost and quantity tracking ticket. I can then go into the model. I can raise as many of those tickets inside the model as I want. And each one of those tickets is then going to be a version of the form. Um, you can also include object, camera and location uh, features. So now that you're taking a form, which traditionally is, if you think about Google Forms or Microsoft Forms, very um, text based. Now that we're assigning it in a 3D environment, you're bringing 3D context in. So you're not just saying that this form exists, you're saying it exists here in the model. Um, it's API ready. So out of the out of the gate, all custom tickets support our API. So you can extract that data from 3D repo and push it into another system. And um, we've got a lot of off-the-shelf components, which I'll go into in a second. Uh, so the next step is how you can build these. So at the moment, you add templates to your team space. So what that means is anyone within that team space will then be able to raise a ticket on one of those forms that you've selected. You can have as many forms in your team space as you want. Um, and then all of your users will be able to raise those um, inside that team space. Um, schemas are created via the API for now, um, and there's a lot of reasoning behind that um, to do with, you know, maximizing our focus on uh, what will give the majority of our users the best uh, experience. But we're also offering a service where if you come to us and tell us, you know, this is what I want to start recording in my 3D model, 3D Repo is going to be able to build those templates for you. 
uh, and offer them back to you. We're also going to come out with a bunch of standard templates uh, for things like QA tracking, uh, building out safety base a little and things like that, that we can offer to you uh, when you sign up to 3D Repo. Um, so what can you put in a custom ticket? Uh, there's a few different fields. Anyone using Microsoft Forms, SharePoint lists, Google Forms would be familiar with these sorts of concepts. Uh, so you can have single line text, long text, uh, single select and multi-select. So they just take the form of drop down menus, which are searchable. So if you had a project where you had a specific number of locations and you wanted to record an issue um, in line with the location, you could have a, a drop down list of all of your locations. Over the course of the project, those con the content of those drop-down lists can change, so you can update them. So if six months into a project, you get a couple of new locations, you can add them into the drop-down, and anyone creating or editing a ticket on that project will then see those updated um, that those updated options. Uh, you can add dates. So you can add any number of dates now. So each one of these uh, fields, you can add as many of them as you want to your form. So not only now can you have a due date, but you could have a due date um, you could have a an approval date. You could have a, um, a, a must-have date. So you could have a bunch of different dates that you can track. And then all of that data, due to the API connection, is going to be available in tools like Power BI. So you can start to track uh, that data over time. Uh, we also have true or false arguments. So if you want to say that something's been complete or you want to say something's been checked, you could just simply toggle that on and off. And then numbers for things like quantities and cost and stuff like that. Um, so I'm going to go into a demo and then I'll jump back to the presentation to explain a few more of the features to you. So let me just switch over to 3D Repo. So this is 3D Repo inside the new um, UI that Andrew was explaining. So this is the same model viewer. It's all the same back end. So um, I know this has been a, a question that we've had from a few of our customers in the past. If they've got models in the old version of 3D Repo, will they work in the new version? The answer is yes. It it is the same back end. Um, it's sorry, my computer went a bit crazy then. It's the same back end. All we're doing is changing what the front end looks like. So today, if you logged in and accessed V5, you're going to see all the latest models that you already had in, in V4, which is the older version. So here I've got my custom tickets feature on the side. I can just click it in the same way I click issues or risks. And then once I'm in there, I can click new ticket, and that's going to give me all of the options of forms that I've uploaded to this uh, team space. So I've got carbon issues. That's a big thing. At the moment, we talked, and Mia, our uh, implementation manager, did a very good presentation at BIM Summit um, about carbon and evaluating carbon inside models. But the next step of that is, okay, once you've evaluated what the... Um, what the impact of carbon is on that model how do you then start telling people this needs to be mitigated we need action over here and this material needs to change or this design needs to change and by creating a custom ticket you can now identify um, an issue um, and say that potentially maybe the roof material we want to aim to get it uh, recyclable uh, let's just call it roof material um, and then come in and potentially have um, a bunch of carbon information and again all of this can be updated via the api as well so if you are using one click or something like that you can populate hundreds of these tickets automatically but then assign them to lots of different people so that they can then take that action go away uh mitigate the carbon uh impact and then come back and and run a new test to to see if the design now satisfies um we can also start doing things like uh, installation. So if you want to track the installation of elements on a, on a model, I could say, I could come in and say these panels have now been complete. I could select all the panels in the model. Um, and then I could save that ticket. And that ticket now has those elements attached. And I could go in and attach schedule information. So I could say when it was started, when it was finished. Um, and all things like that. And then if I go back, that ticket has now been added to the list. Because we've now got a lot of different tickets, which may be serving different purposes, you can then filter them. So you can filter for health and safety incident reports, cost management tickets and installation tickets. And so back to what I was saying about issues being um, being the them process of us taking someone else's process, risks being the us process of us developing something with our customers. Uh, what custom tickets is, is really the you process. It's us saying, we've now built this platform 
which is essentially limitless in what you could attach to it um, and use the 3D model for enriching your construction processes. And we will now happily work with you to build out your workflows to say, okay, actually, I want to use the 3D model for this. I want to use it for interface management. I want to use it for work package management. Potentially, uh, with the example of work package management, what if I had a ticket for each um, work package and inside that ticket it identified which elements were expected to be delivered on that package I could assign it to the subcontractor I then would get a comment thread for each ticket to, so that we can communicate and identify whether we're all happy with what is involved in that package and it becomes a communication tool and it really starts hitting the limit of what BIM was really designed to do um, so I want to go back to um, my PowerPoint now just see if that works. Sorry, PowerPoint was having a bit of a problem here. Uh, one second. One second, sorry, bear with me. Uh, Andrew, are you there? Do you mind just covering questions quickly? Because my computer seems to have gone funny. Yeah, no problem. Um... So yeah, we do have a few questions come in. Um, one of them is, would you be able to configure the fields in your forms to pull data through by the API from another system? Yes, so that's what uh, Matt was actually alluding to there is that, yeah, you could connect to another system and have uh, those fields auto fill um, based on some sort of rule. Um, obviously, there's a bit of integration work to be done there with the API and thinking about how you set it up, but yes, it's definitely possible. Um, uh if i create a ticket type is it available to all users on the project yes it's actually done at a team space level um at the moment so if you create a ticket type in your team space it'll be available to all projects in that team space um but then obviously if you have a lot of them they're still filterable um in that sense uh Can a form field read a value from selected model data rather than typing it in manually? Um, currently, no, um, but I like the idea. I like the idea. <laughs> um, yeah, me too. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but no, that is the answer, unfortunately. Um, we um, are, so uh, as part of the development here, sorry, just so, uh, am I still sharing my screen, Andrew? Basically, Zoom's disappeared for me, so I can't tell. Yeah, you're on integration possibly. Okay, yeah, so that's probably a good place to pick it up. So um, one of the things we are going to be doing is bringing groups into uh, custom tickets in the future. That's one of the next things on our roadmap, so that as well as uh, form-based features, you can then start to add rules so that you could say, select all of the objects that satisfy this rule, and it will select those automatically. And what that means is when you get new models come in, it's gonna automatically update which objects are selected to that ticket. So you can start to do really clever stuff around model validation where you bring in all of your tickets pre pre-built and then they will then test those rules and see what has passed or failed and then when things fail you can then assign it to people to then go fix and you've got that workflow to then someone to say yes I've now fixed it here is the proof that I fixed it this now shows nothing um, so just coming back to the presentation quickly apologies for the technical problem um, I want to go through integration because this is really one of the main things that's come up when we've been talking to customers is particularly with uh, safety base when uh, we talk to our customers about safety base, they love it. And one of the questions is often, but I've got my existing health and safety risk register in Excel, or I've got my existing health and safety risk register in SharePoint. And it takes this certain schema, which doesn't exactly one-to-one -one match what we've got in, um, in safety base. So what custom tickets allows you to do is exactly match the form that you've got in 3D repo to your spreadsheet, to your tracking task in Sablono, to your um, issue that you've raised on Autodesk BIM 360 or in Procore or a spreadsheet that you've got in Smartsheet or an action ticket that you've got in Fieldwire. So really what we're saying now, you don't have to say, oh, in 3D Repo, it says uh, priority, but in Sablono, it says um, importance. Now we say, no, in Sablono, it says importance and in 3D Repo, it says importance too. Uh, and here's an example of that. Um, on the left, I've got a, a custom issue that's been created inside a platform called Plan Radar. And on the right, I've got 
the same custom ticket format in 3D Repo. So you can see that all of the fields are available and built into 3D Repo. So what that means is now you can build an integration where once you raise that ticket in Plan Radar, it automatically gets added to 3D Repo. And because 3D Repo now also adds the 3D awareness part of the, the story, you can then say, okay, person on site filled out the form in Plan Radar. Now, person in the office who needs to add a bit more context can then identify exactly where it happened. Uh, if you do have, if you're working on linear projects, you could actually take the latitude and longitude from plan, plan radar and position that in the um, in the 3D space. So now you go from having uh, members of the delivery team on site with phones filling in simple forms, and the moment they hit send, we could take their latitude and longitude from whatever app they recorded it in and populate that inside the 3D model. So now you've got live pins inside the 3D model. The key there, and, and I won't lie, we have been looking at our competition for this. Um, we have been looking at how our competition does things and how we want to do things going forward. And part of that philosophy is that if you've already picked out the best tool for, for QA um, assess, uh, quality assessment forms on site, or you figured out the best rule for the best tool for possession management, or you've already figured out the best rule for people management, or your subcontractors have, we don't want to start saying, no, 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 you should use 3D repo for these, because we know that we're never going to have the same level of um, performance that you would get out of a dedicated platform. So instead, what we're going to do is say, actually, we'll just tie into those tools so that each member of your team can use the best tool for the job. And then 3D Repo can be the place where all of that data comes together and is visualized in with the 3D model uh, to give more context to the people who don't share that speciality uh, and who don't have access to those tools. Um, so that's what we're really aiming for with um, custom tickets. Uh, so I'll leave my presentation at that. And like I said before, Andrew, unfortunately, I can't read the questions, so I'll have to rely on you reading them out. Yeah, no problem. Um, so we have got a few more questions. Is the API bi-directional? So if you integrate with to a workflow engine and the status is updated there, can it be automatically reflected in 3D repo? Yep. So we use a lot of tools um, like Microsoft Power Automate internally, and we work with a few customers to develop Microsoft Power Automate flows. Um, but we've also worked with uh, Autodesk Construction Cloud Connect. We've got a, a connector on there. Uh, and all of this can be built on those tools as well so that you can do your kind of if this, then that type scenarios to link all of your data together. Yep. Yep. Uh, who buys 3D Repo? Is it mainly primes or do clients, asset owners, mandate it in tenders? Look, I, it, um, or do clients have their own capability, which the supply chain uses? I think it's a real mix. So we do work a lot with tier one contractors, um, but equally we work with multidisciplinary consultants as well. Um, so I think it's anyone who realizes the need to get people access to model data when they have a lot of people within their organization who don't necessarily use BIM tools. And I think that that's what the crux of this comes down to is some of this stuff is obviously not possible in something like Revit, but it, most people, if they're, if they're a Revit user, they'll look at models in Revit. 3D Repo really comes in or its power really comes in in getting everyone else access to that same information and being able to have that bi-directional communication, um, which is, and custom tickets will just help with that with a whole, with a whole other group of use cases outside of just your normal model coordination and, and BIM information management services. I think, and actually, Andrew, that, that comes on to something that starts to get into the um, the areas that I think are, um, are really powerful as well is, uh, obviously, being in the position we're in, Andrew and I spend a lot of time on LinkedIn you know, looking at what other people are doing. And a lot of our, a lot, we see a lot of people in the industry doing the kind of make versus buy assessment and deciding to build their own tools. And what we've sort of worked on with 3D Repo for the last seven years is a lot of the hard to do things in that process. So authentication, security, managing access, um, API integrations, all of those things so that when we've got customers out there building their own apps on top of 3D Repo, we're kind of that halfway point between going out completely on your own and using, you know, Unity and using your own backend tools, 
or taking something completely off the shelf, which is prescriptive. What Custom Tickets is doing is positioning us in the middle where we're saying, no, actually, we understand that you want to build your own processes. You want to have some IP there. You want to have something unique to your business that you can sell to your customers and stand behind and be proud of. But at the same time, you don't want to go and hire 20 software engineers and have all the burden of maintaining updates, managing new versions of Revit, you know, that come out every year and all that sort of thing. So that's where we're kind of starting to move 3D repo towards with this this custom ticket stuff. And we think that in that sense, from a customer base, we're going to start, you know, we're, we're trying to get to a strategic level with a lot of these customers um, so that we can start to say, okay, 3D repo is the future proof tool that you need. No matter what scenario you throw at us, 3D repo is going to be able to handle it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that's all of the questions that we've had come in. Um, if there are any more, I'll give you a couple of minutes uh, to quickly type them in before we, we finish up. Um, what I will say is, as I said earlier, um, the, the new user interface and this custom tickets feature are currently in beta testing for our uh, enterprise and existing users. If you do want access to that now, drop us an email um, and we can uh, give you instructions on how to get, get into that and, and start using it today. Um, it will be launched into 3 repo later this month um, and we'll probably have a few more uh, webinars and trade. Oh, one more question. Oh, Matt, we didn't really cover how people can create the tickets. Um, it's obviously a service that we can offer, but is it something that they can do themselves? Yep. So we have we have some templates available um, to sort of give you a start. And we've um, we're in the process of writing uh, the, the help articles to get you up and running. So, yeah, it's completely user serviceable you can do what you like or alternatively you could talk to us we can build out one or two examples for you and then you could use those as a basis for building out further developments down the line so it it's as much or as little involvement as you like from us but because it uses the api part of what we could do is sort of explain to you how to use the api and get you up and running with that um and that will also help for other things if you want to do stuff like power bi integration or point-to-point -point integrations between platforms but it, it effectively works by posting a schema yes to the api right so you, yeah you, you write the you write the kind of script schema to, to the specification that we give you um and you can use the examples post that to the api and then it will automatically create it. so it's not like a drag and drop interface or anything like that um it is fully scriptable um, mm -hmm. um okay look I, th I think that's it then um thanks very much matt and thank you very much everyone for attending um, any more questions, please do drop us an email, sales at 3drepo.com, or as I said, if you want to get involved in any of the beta testing over the next few weeks, um, please do let us know. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks, Cheers, everyone. Man. Cheers, bye-bye. Thanks, bye.